Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, uh, December 12th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've determined length, episode number uh, 628. And things are getting weird. But we also have uh, Edward Angelina Cook here. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And of course, we have another Landscape Relationships episode. That's one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why we invite him over. Gary, what's the topic for today? It's the holiday season. Um, it's the holiday season. So. <laughs> Like Pavlov, just mm -hmm, couldn't resist. Uh, just got out of a concert. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all thought Garlic Sold a Booty Hole was the way to get payment, you just have to sing a lyric of a popular song he can't resist. Anyways. Bitch. Hashtag inside joke. Um, so... <laughs> Landscape of relationships. No, it is. It's the holiday season. So um, Ed is here to join us because we wanted to have a little conversation about the in-laws. Most likely when you find yourself in a committed relationship with a individual or individuals, um, if your heart so desires, you will have extended family or mm -hmm. families. Um, and that includes people to which uh, are connected directly to your betrothed. So, mm -hmm. Ed, we kind of wanted to talk about, like, navigating those individuals who come as a package with the person that you are <laughs> sharing your life with or opening up about. Because you cannot ignore them, or at least I don't think that's a practical choice. So... Right. Um, yeah, well, you know, as always, thank you for having me on. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, in-laws is and can be a really prickly topic for a lot of people. Um, you know, there's a reason why there are a lot of movies <laughs> and a lot of media about, you know, monster in-laws. Um uh, and, you know, I think one of the things that we see is a lot of those are, are very heterosexually focused. Um, and uh, even in doing some of the kind of research here, um, you know, it's, it is, it's very um, heterosexually focused, right? So um, I had to really dive in um, to find, you know, same sex um in law relationships, uh, because I think that there is an important dynamic there. Um, so, you know, like how does, um, you know, like, so, you know, is this the same with, um, with same sex relationships, considering that, like, you know, the research out there says that three out of four, uh, couples will have difficult relationships with their, uh, with their in-laws, with their heterosexual mm -hmm. in-laws. Is that the case with, um, same sex relationships. What do you think? <sighs> well, although they're, we're not in laws yet, we're, 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 we're just partnered, but we've been together long enough. 
Um, I have, I think I have a slightly better relationship with Jim's extended family than he has with mine. And that could be because we're in different cities. They don't see each other all the time. Um, Jim and my, Jim has met my mother, my brother, and his wife. That is who he's officially met. Although Facebook is probably, he's all my friends and extended cousins and stuff probably know him. They just have not met him. Um, having said that, though, um, my mom one of the things I remember reading in the article was like, my my mom is cordial, but I don't know if that is acceptance. If that makes sense, because mm-hmm. um, I know my mother, um, and I can. It's hard. I can. There's a that general like I'm tolerating you because you need to be in my life and i've seen her handle things like that in the past and this feels similar which i i'm not a fan of but i i get it um my brother has and and shauna have been more accepting of course that had probably had a lot to do with how they met so um uh i don't think i've told this story yeah i did probably so, um, after I was staying with my brother, after my dad's wife passed away and we were at the funeral and Jim was going to come down and pick me up and he was going to meet my brother, Chris and his wife. Um, and that was going to be, you know, we're going to have like a little lunch and then we were heading home. I was going to head home. Well, Jim was in a car accident on the way, like not too far from where um, their house. So they got to meet Jim for Chris. My brother got to meet Jim because he had to take me to the scene of the accident. And um, we ended up, um, Jim ended up having to go to the emergency room. So we had all of that. And then the car was basically total. So I wasn't going home. Um, so, uh, we spent the night, um, there. So they had pretty much like a whole, like almost a day, um, to spend with him. Cause we didn't have to go figure out how to get a, uh, rental car to get home and yada, yada, yada. So, which is hard to do if you're out of state, if your license or whatever is out of state or, or you don't have a credit card. So it was a mess, but anyway. Um, so I feel like their relationship is better than him and my mom, but I don't know what else to do to change it because they don't see each other that often. That was a long winded story. I apologize. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah, no, um, I know that for, um, well, and, and, you know, I also kind of want to throw in there that uh, for some people, right, um, the in-law relationship may not bring with it the negative, you know, there is that one out of four um, mm-hmm. scenario. So, like, you know, I think about, like, like myself, right? Um, both of my parents passed away before uh, my Jim and I got together, so having um another set of parents um is you know great <laughs> um <laughs> like for me um regardless of you know um the you know interactional history between him and or between them and um, and my husband or whatever i'm just glad that they're alive um oh, you know um i mean well sure though yeah uh so you know, um, that's kind of my base, that's kind of my base point. Um, and you know, for, I think for some people, they may be coming from families who are very unaccepting, right. And like Mm -hmm. their partner may partner, um, may be 
uh, may come from a family that is very accepting. So like, you know, that in-law relationship may be really a positive, um, restorative relationship. Um, you know, like we said, not, not always the case. Um, but you know, one can hope. Um, but I think the one thing that's, that's really important is, uh, that when you are, uh, in a relationship, right. And in-laws are, um, part of that, that we are talking about two, like three different sets of rule books. Um, you have your relationships rule books, uh, rule book, right. And then you have your family rule book. And then you have your partner's family rule book. And while your relationship rule book may have been, you know, creation, the, as far as the creation has gone, that may not have been that long, you know, the, the history of, uh, your, the, each family's rule book, right. Or playbook. Um, has been going on for a really long time. So you're coming into a a pickup game, so to speak. <laughs> um, that is that is very well established. Um, there are dynamics that are that are set in place. Um, people know their rules. People know their places. People know their hierarchies, right? Um, and and you know it's it can be really challenging to find your place in that um so you know it's um it's really important to have general awareness <laughs> about the situation so that you don't get kind of sucked in or um uh you know if there are some really toxic or you know unhealthy patterns going on that that we set some boundaries um, and we kind of, you know, don't get ourselves wrapped up in those. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> and that like, and that there are sometimes going to be um, conflictual interact, conflictual interactions between say, you know, two people, maybe your partner and, uh, and another person, right. Um, there may be difficult pasts, uh, like there may be, um, you know, like we may be okay with somebody now, but like maybe something gets said and that brings up really uncomfortable memories from the past. Um, and mm -hmm. it may be a very crunchy present. So, you know, like sometimes we may go to a family function and, you know, a couple of people are talking, <laughs> right? Mm. Um, and, you know, um, and that's a very real thing. Um, so it's important for us to be aware of that and that, you know, knowing what's, what's our responsibility and what's not our responsibility. Um, and... And like I said, boundaries. Um, I'll talk more about it later, but like um, I think one of the things that is most important when to, when when we're talking about in laws is uh, placing yourself at the center of your own experience um, and uh, not being the object of your life um, and not letting your in laws dictate um, what is going on in your life. Um, and knowing your values and, and, and sailing your ship, not mm -hmm. somebody else's. Um, um, yeah. And just, you know, kind of being, uh, like to, uh, harken back to what we were talking about a few months ago with Bernie Brown's, uh, braving, uh, trust model, right. It's, um, you know, kind of go into these situations, um, with a generous attitude, right. Like, um, not assuming the worst of others, <laughs> right? Um, be compassionate, be kind, um, and, uh, recognize that a lot about what's going on is, is less about you and almost entirely about them. Mm. If there are, you know, negative interactions happening. Um, so the like um so those are kind of some 
I guess you could say rules for engagement or just things to be aware of. Um, but um, I recently just got this really cool new book that I think <gasps> that I should, should get. It's called Boundary, wait, Set Boundaries, Find Peace. Um, and there's even an entire chapter on here on how to set boundaries with your family, right? Oh. And since it is the the holidays, <laughs> they have in here a section on setting boundaries with your family around the holidays. Um, and uh, that can be really hard. Um, I know that the one for me is, or the one that I hear often is, well, you know, I have to go here and then I have to go over here and then, you know, um, I have to spend time at this person's house and then, you know, then we have to go over here. And I was like, do you have to? <laughs> like, do, like, do you have to do those it, things? You have no idea how often I've said, mm -mm. It's like, like, no, I don't, I, I don't have to. I mean, you may feel you want to, you have to, but I'm, I'm, I'm the, the partner i don't i don't need to go y'all can have that conversation because i know y'all need to have a conversation and i don't need to be a part of that conversation i don't need to be in that environment because i know when y'all get when this i'm talking about jen's family sorry fyi um <laughs> <laughs> when they get um talking on something that it is interesting are like family like family oriented um it can get i don't want to say heated but it can it can it emotions get raised and things start happening like are being said and as the impact in the family no i don't i don't want to be i can't be in proximity of it because it is it is very easy for me to be swayed by whoever's the loudest and whoever's the most emotional. And I know who that usually is. I'm not gonna say who it is, but I know who it usually is. And sometimes I shouldn't agree with them. I'm gonna keep their gender <laughs> neutral, cause yeah. Anywho, um, but um, with my, my family, we've always had, Thanksgiving has been our holiday. And with pandemic, everything recently, things have been changing. I didn't go home. And the main reason I didn't go home is because my mother said, I don't think you need to come because no one's coming. Come to find out, oh, people showed up. It wasn't like everybody, but it was a decent amount of people. And it would have been nice to have seen them. But I also realized I didn't really need to go. And I felt fine with not going because I had a good reason not to go. I had to travel. I would have had to stay in a hotel. Um, traveling on the bus is not the best thing, especially with numbers and COVID and yada, yada, yada. And even though I'm vaccinated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I also know that family members are not vaccinated. So, and I have a partner at home who is dealing with issues with their lungs, his lungs, that um, I need to be wary about what I do because I shouldn't and can't bring it home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so Gary? Yeah. Well, no, I, I was just going to say, Damon, like your example, you know, is to say you don't have to do things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a revelation. I think that I think that's part of what the pandemic has taught a lot of people is that we we have created patterns. We have set expectations. There mm -hmm. is like precedent for these events, these activities, whatever mm -hmm. they may be. But, you know. You do not have to do them. You can yeah. completely not do them. 
and life will continue on. Um, now, that isn't to say that there won't be, you know, some some conversation, some potential mm-hmm. emotional strife or whatever yeah. um, to come out of it. I don't know. I mean, it, back to Ed, what you were talking about, you know, like, do we think that um, it's the same for same sex relationships that, you know, three out of four couples have difficult I can't say that I know because the only thing I really know is what gets presented in media. And I've been thinking about it while we were, while I was listening to the two of you and I was like, wow, media really skews it for same gendered relationships because I feel like the in-laws are over the top, ridiculous, like so supportive, like Rockwell family, Mm -hmm. you know, like come over, let's trim the tree and have some cocoa. (laughs) And aren't you just also fabulous? And we love you. You know what I mean? It's like, huh? Or they play the villain and they're monsters. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, like it kind of goes in this other weird area that they're not really good people or they're not good to their children. Do you know what I mean? And like, you know, there's Mm -hmm. like, and I don't mean like, you know, that they try to sabotage the relationship. Maybe they do. But, you know, sometimes they're just like, you know, so self-obsessive, um, you know, and you're just kind of like, Ooh, like, OK, that's that's the thing. And it's not to say that, that it can't be born and true. So um, I just I don't know. I, I think regardless of what kind of a relationship you're in and how you identify and how you present yourself and what your your, you know, um, activities are within that relationship with you know the person or persons you're sharing your life with i think that becomes just a challenge to make connections with other people that have as you were saying this whole history that they bring to the table every time because of who they are um they raised the persons that you're in you know in love with that you're sharing your life they have had so many memories done so many things um and yet it's on a different level it's not like best friends because meeting best friends of of your beloved is one thing, but they have less, typically, more often than not, they have less quantity. And even at that, the quality can be different. And mm-hmm. some people say, you know, like you have, we, we've said for many years, part of our generation, you know, we, we developed this language of saying we have chosen family. So these are the people that I want in my life. And then these are the people that I have in my life. Mm-hmm. And that's to say, like, these are blood like this this comes with the package and and i think um time and perspective really can uh give you some insights because i know for me the this current decade of my life that i'm living in that's um coming towards the the latter part of it i see things now that i did not see when i was younger and it's very interesting to kind of have some distance and then to look at the family and be kind of like, wow, I never realized <laughs> like some y'all neurotic AF. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and and so, I mean, for me, um, I had to think like, uh, it's been a long time since I've been in a relationship, one, two, Never in the relationships that I was with in of same gender did I meet the families of the people I was seeing. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm. This is a subject area I can't really connect to. Um, I do know with the 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 families of the people that I dated. Um, this is going way back to like high school. Um, I see it through a whole different lens now because back then I was kind of like, well, like these are these are parents, these are parents of of who I'm dating, and I have parents. Do you know what I mean? So I saw them kind of on the same level, but it's very different because now as an adult, being old enough to not only have children but technically to be old enough to have grandchildren, your whole life perspective is very different about who people are and what they do and what they're trying to achieve and you know possibly what is happiness and what is love and do you know what i mean and so um i think you know when you're much younger parents have the wisdom of experience in some ways and they might be kind of like this is not this isn't relevant but this is like the thing that echoes in my mind it's kind of like you are heartbroken in this moment but it is just a moment Mm -hmm. and to echo back pre-show and, you know, if life were made of moments, you know, yeah. how would you ever know if you had one? Um, oh, Gary. So, 
but but that's there's some there's some real heartfelt truth in that though. It's like you know you need to have the ups and the downs and and the different things to kind of like have perspectives about that. And I think that's true for in laws of you know their children and the and the loved ones of their children. Um, so yeah, it's it's a whole. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a snow globe, you know, like like gets kind of gets shaken up and moved around. And yeah, it could be really pretty and beautiful. But is it pretty and beautiful in 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 the in the midst of the storm, quote unquote, or is it only when everything settles down? And is it one of those like we just leave it on the shelf and we don't touch it? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I think like there's a there's a lot of different um, dynamics at play, and I like the fact that you talked about you know that. Um, you kind of have these different rule books. And I think people don't think about that. You know, like I have, I think of it this way. So this isn't the same thing, but like my best friend's mother and I have a very interesting uh, past. We got real prickly with each other the very first time we ever met. And it has been an ongoing joke between my best friend and I for decades. And recently um, their, their father passed away and I went to the funeral mm-hmm. to the to the, to the church, to the ceremony and all this stuff. Um, and I was prepared for any outcome. I was prepared for open arms. I was prepared for cold shoulder. I was prepared for snarkiness. I was prepared for like looks of judgment. Um, I mean, it was just like, I didn't know because we've never really been close or bonded. And the one time we kind of really did have an interaction. Um, apparently I was young, full of attitude uh, quote unquote, rolled my eyes at them, which put me oh. on a list <laughs> as a not very good person, apparently. And that has that was the last I ever knew of the assessment of me. Mm. Fast, forward, fast forward decades later, and um, the interaction at the church was not reflective of, I guess, their inner thoughts because. I felt that they were very much keeping their distance and not really like paying, you know, giving me any heat of, of, of recognition and existence. Um, oh, and afterwards, God. no, not even that. Like, I mean, I it was know. like, it was like yeah. I was invisible. It was, but mm-hmm. to be fair, it's grieving. So mm-hmm. that's a whole other thing. Maybe a show for another topic. And um, <laughs> consequently, I got word back later that they were very complimentary. And even the family had said, you're really special because you have known like our sibling, our child, our family member, the longest out of anybody except the family. Mm-hmm. And that really meant something to them. Like it, it, it had a fortitude to it. So I, I took that as the gift that it was, which is you are important to this person and we honor that. We may not fully understand it, but your name has been expressed for so long. We feel that we know you, even though we haven't spent time together. Mm-hmm. And so to me, that's about the closest I've got in terms of a relationship and knowing about a family that's sort of akin to being an in-law, even though my best friend and I are not in a relationship, you know? <laughs> and, and so, um, but yeah, like it's a whole, it's a dance and there's a part of me that's like, I don't know the music. I don't know the moves. Mm. The choreographer fucking up and left at my ass and didn't teach me nothing. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, do we grapevine? Oh, no, no, you don't like a grapevine. Okay, so we two-step. No, we don't like the two-step. Mm-hmm. All right, well, um, I learned polka in high in elementary school. Or, no, uh, all right, wrong. Uh, swing dance? No. Um, okay. Uh, shit. I... Like, okay, okay, the achy breaky, right? <laughs> No, God, I feel that so much, um, Gary, um, because I essentially met Jim's family in, um, in spots and shifts, as it were. Um, I met his, his brother and sister-in-law first, and I was given a very different like interpretation of them by him than what I ended up seeing. Um you know they 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 were um because Jim's the oldest. So Jim is the is the oldest. Um the two I met were are the middle and then he has a younger brother who um I think I met last. 
But anyway, but it was so meeting them was very interesting uh, because they were meant to like the way they were interpreted to me was like they're they're the more accepting understanding because they you know have tattoo they've gotten tattoos and are are cool and laid back and they ride motorcycles and yada 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 and I'm like okay cool like I had this idea of them in my head and no they just people like <laughs> they're not like like when you when you hear things like biker and tattoos and and what have you you kind of have this idea in your head about who they and what they are at the end of the day though they were just like they were they were they were a family like they had kids and you know they they've they've you know the kids are were a little older so they were able to relax a little bit in regards to things and so they got the tattoos and they you know probably had the motorcycles and all that fun stuff and i was like oh okay not what i was expecting not that it was a bad thing but it was a very interesting inter- you know time to see them um they're still you know they were still a little bit more religious than i was planning and that kind of threw me off for a bit but it made sense in the grander scheme of things um and then uh i met their children then when we bought the house so this is that was around when we first started dating and then when we were bought the house one of the things we had decided to do was that we were going to come out and talk to our parents because jim technically hadn't come out to his family and neither had i so he well that's not like his parents um even though he lived with his dad for many years. And I've met his dad like several times um, through the years, but never in a we're fucking kind of, you know. <laughs> we're in a relationship. <laughs> like, Probably like, fucking would not be the thing that you would be bringing up. No, 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 no. We we're, do we're, things to each other that you don't want to imagine. Yes. We are in a relationship, yes. Um but um, so I knew, technically knew his dad the longest. Um, um, but uh, just getting to know and then meeting his mother and that was that was that was oh so interesting. His mother is a is a is a is a is a treat, um, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and. There's 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 more there, but I, I I don't want to get into that right now. But it was just very interesting meeting the way we met and getting that impression and meeting them in shifts was just like the difficult part. I'm glad I did it. We did it this way because I don't know I would if I could have handled all of them at once. Mm. Yeah, I, I will say this. Um, one of the things I think we well, I'm making a, a grand presumption in this statement, so I want to preface it like this isn't true, obviously, for everyone. But I think we we collectively make a a set of presumptions about meeting individuals, and one of the things I think that we neglect to remember is that there is a legacy that is that comes with them, and we don't know all of that. And so you meet individuals and you don't know their past. You don't know their upbringing. You, mm-hmm. And you don't know about the experiences that they've shared. And part of me was thinking about that, Damon, as you were talking, because I was reflecting on how like, I went to this funeral and I'm meeting these family members. And I'm meeting some of them for the first time ever in decades of, of being friends. We just have not crossed paths. But I also have heard so many stories and had so many conversations about the experiences and the things and and what they've done in, with their life and what they're doing now because that's been a part of what's been shared and you know I, I think that you know in the midst of meeting people we forget that though because we're so focused on the moment that we're we're paying attention to all the things that are happening here and now and that's fine but there's like there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yes, you are meeting them in the now. So you are meeting what they are presenting in this moment, but the picture that they're presenting to you is refined 
and has been worked on nonstop continuously for as long as they've been alive. So it has been edited, it has been redone, it has been um, possibly started over, uh, but it's it, it's still the same canvas. It's still the same ultimate like picture when you step back and look at it, but it's different. And you know you're just you're just looking at it in this moment, so you're just kind of mm-hmm. like this is what I get, and what you're missing is is some of the rest of the stuff that I guess kind of fills it in. So and and the reason I say that is is I think that's important to know about you know in terms of in laws of extended family, is you know they've they've had whole lives, whole legacies of things, and sometimes you get to know some of that before you meet them, and other times you get nothing. Mm-hmm. Like I I, th- I think about like how we see this stuff that comes up in social media, and people post things like um you know. I'm single, and if you want to hire me for a family get together, here are my rates. Like, I, I actually am quite amused by it, and it, it, it tittles me because they're like, you know, for a hundred dollars, I'll show up. We'll we'll have a drink, like we'll be there for forty five minutes, and then we're out. And for like two hundred, <laughs> we'll actually do a meal, and like I'll reference you, you know, and blah blah blah. Maybe give you like a cute nickname, and like for three hundred, you know, like I mean, it like it kind of escalates. It does this whole thing, and I just think it's really kind of funny because they're like offering a service to help another person in a time of need, mm-hmm. and basically taking on an acting role. Um, and I find all of that really kind of like insightful and amusing because, you know, the person just wants to be able to get through this moment. So that that well, example Gary's partner will be played by. <laughs> <laughs> but but that I give that up as an example of how like you could walk into a room and have absolutely zero knowledge of any of these individuals or what's happening and blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's like, you know, um, yeah. And, and so how do you intermingle with that dynamic and how do you present yourself um you know and i and i think that also is is what really gets uh, a lot of strife and stress and anxiety for folks is it's like you know do i be myself or do i present me and those are two different things dynamically yeah. because presenting my you know, like being myself is i'm i'm just this is it like this is what you get but presenting me is this is how i want to be viewed this is how i want to be seen Mm. so you might you might really kind of amp up the energy you might be more dynamic you might be more bubbly more you know like interactive and fun and laugh you know and the reality is you're like i'm just kind of chill you know quiet whatever so yeah i i think there's so much that goes into the dynamic of you know especially this time of year, like meeting people and addressing them and, you know, and also like to me, there's, there's always stuff going on. And because I'm a highly observant person, I tend to be a little bit more quiet. I just kind of watch and see what's happening and like, you know, the pieces of, of what's this picture, this picture is the puzzle, so to speak, um, and what's going on with it in that case. But everybody's minds are kind of a little different. Yeah. Um, I know that for, um, for for me um i have a very large family so um i can only imagine what it is like for or what it was like when jim met my family he met them at a family reunion um which for even myself um can be overwhelming um so <laughs> uh you know meeting 80 people um who i barely even know um (laughs) you know for somebody who you know struggles with meeting people in the first place is really difficult um and you know like i don't know what i said to help him out it's just like listen i'm not expecting you to do anything right i'm not expecting you to know anybody's names i'm not expecting you to do anything right um (laughs) Just smile and nod, because that's what I'm probably going to be doing. <laughs> um, right, and even like our wedding, right? Um, and you know, a lot of a lot of you know things are. It's it can be really hard, especially when you're coming into an already established family. Um, and you know, uh, I think for him it's nice um, because you know, like uh, you know, his family is there's, there can be a lot of conflict (laughs) in his Mm. family. So like, 
with mine, there's not as much. I mean, there's, you know, there's always going to be conflict, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, but you know, he's like, you know, you all don't hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and, you know, so, yeah, that's very true. That's one of the things I was, as I was looking through some of the information you gave us, um, you know, they don't, you know, you're, you don't know what you're getting yourself into when you meet someone and you meet their family. Like, I don't, I, I feel like obviously I was shaped by my family, um, but about like college, when I went to college, um, I, I think I've talked about this in the past, like I intentionally started a slow separation as I found out more about myself um, because I didn't want to deal with the potential like um, uh, refusal or, you know, if I were gay and they weren't accepting. Mm -hmm. So I, in, I subconsciously and consciously was separating myself from my family and not doing a whole lot of things. And I feel like I changed because of that. Personally, I feel very better, but um, because my family, woo. Um, uh, but on on the, on the flip of that, like I don't I don't know what Jim would get into if he were to meet them, some of them anyway. And you don't know what that person's like a person's family will be like based on the person that you're meeting. You know, like I I don't know. Like I'll just put an example. I don't know what Gary's family is like. Only be, I only know because of what he's told us, but I don't, I wouldn't know what Gary's family was like if we were meeting on a date for the first time, you know, getting to know each other, getting, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cause I highly doubt that's going to be part of the like first conversations people have. I mean, if you do, that might throw up a red flag for some people like, hi, I'm Gary. This is my family. Mm. Um, <laughs> like, like if if that's how you're interacting on a first date, I mean, kudos to you, I guess that you're so open about things. But, um, mm, I, 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 that might be my like red flag. Peace, love you. Yeah, we, yeah, we may, we may need, yeah, we may need boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And I was just going to say, like, I, I, I was thinking of in Damon's example. I was like, to meet Damon's family, um, there's a lot that comes to the, to the table with me because of the years that we've done this podcast and the amount of, like, things that we've talked about and the things that Damon has described and even off air, like, unrecorded <laughs> conversations. Uh -huh. So, like, I would I would be because I'm such a person that likes puzzles, like I would be putting things together. I'd be like, okay, so this is this person. And like, I would be trying to like draw the diagram and understand mm -hmm. who the people are, who are, who are the players like in this, in this whole ensemble. And then more importantly, I would be paying attention to very specific things because it's what I would expect. Mm -hmm. It's what I think they're going to be presenting and what's going to be happening. Um, and and also there's just a, a whole lot of unknown mm -hmm. you know there there's um every family has its dynamics has its culture has mm -hmm. its um you know the way it operates um some of them are very like uh hierarchical and some of them are very you know like like there is you know individuals who are revered because of their age and their experience and the you know the position that they hold in the family and then there are other families who are like fuck the pomp and circumstance jesus christ just you know i mean like you know yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and i had two dynamic families like that like the one side of my parents was one and one side was the other and and that <laughs> takes some real navigating to be mm -hmm. like okay so for this one we dress a certain way and we kind of interact a certain way. We kind of do a certain thing. And that family, thank goodness, is lightened up. Um, and then the other family has always been, we don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you were incarcerated? Tell us about that. That's interesting. <laughs> like, That's I mean, fun. Like, yeah. Let me know that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like they're, they're, I hate to say it, but one felt very judgmental and one did not. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think the the knot was much more rooted in none of us are perfect. Mm-hmm. Like and, and we're our whole family has all these things about it that we're not necessarily proud of. We don't parade it around. We don't shout it from the front porch, but you know what? It's there. So mm-hmm. mm. And, th- and that's just kind of how that was handled. And I find that very interesting. And to look back, like, and be older now as an adult and to look back on the legacy of the family and generations and what things have happened, I'm like, oh, it does kind of make sense why these families turned into what they are because of experiences and upbringings and, you know, um, you know, and, and different things. And, you know, and sometimes... Um, people are really, you know, concerned about how they're viewed, um, so to speak. And others are like, meh, ain't no big deal. Yeah. We all put our pants on one leg at a time usually. So, so anyways. It, exactly. So, um, oh, there was something else I was going to say. I don't remember. Oh, so to uh, talk about like the boundaries around the, the holidays. So this, this book suggests, um, uh, so like what it might look like is asking your family to stay in a hotel um stay or you staying in a hotel when you visit family um (laughs) yep taking some taking some space and time to be alone if you're if you're staying with family that's a big one with me um creating new traditions Mm. by buying fewer gifts or sticking to a budget not including people who make your holiday experience uncomfortable. And I want to counter that. Uh, <laughs> and finally, changing the subject when heated topics are mentioned. Um, yeah. So those last two, mm-hmm. I want to gently push <laughs> back on Uh-oh. because... Um, while we may not have we while we may not sure like we cannot include people who make our holiday experience uncomfortable but sometimes we don't get a say in that um so sometimes we have to be willing to tolerate um uncomfortable people for yeah. us right yeah. um and uh so that's one thing right um, we're going to refer to that person as like Aunt Ida, right? Like, so <laughs> Aunt Ida is the person at the at the holiday party who's just annoying AF. Um, and uh-huh. like, she just brings your mood down. And like, you know, because you're trying to keep her out, um, you know, it's just like, like just bumming everybody else out, right? Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. let her be there. Um, yeah. And then the changing the subject when heated topics are mentioned, I have no control over that. Um, I'll just leave the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, It's not my place. Um, I'll just leave. Yeah. I was going to, the ain't Ida kind of situation. Um, I, it's been very interesting to me because what typically so again my family haha um thanksgiving i said was our big holiday um we always get together it's you know everyone knows what thanksgiving is it's always this thursday you know it's a this you know you know when thanksgiving is there's no like it's not moving anywhere you can't hide a get together um especially if it's at a family member's home so like it's gonna happen um so what happens with my family um is most people get together and then i know um some of the cousins and what have you that are what's the best way to put it the 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 ones we don't want to have the uncomfortables we'll call them that the uncomfortables (laughs) The uncomfortables. Um, yeah. The Aunt Ida's. Yeah. They will always show up and they know exactly what to do. They come in, they they 
get their hellos, they greet the elders, and then they grab the um, um, uh, styrofoam like containers, they fill them with food, and then they get the fuck out. Like that is how it is all it has been for several years. Mm. To the point where we, we, where my cousin who kind of run, who kind of is organizing everything, has bought like a shit ton of these like containers and leaves them out in clear view because she knows that's what's going to happen. And we're all fine with it. Well, I'm not fine with it only because like y'all could be a little bit more respectful of the, you know, the home and like whoever's hosting and, you know, give a little hello and, and, how you doing? Maybe, maybe drop a little coin. Maybe, you know, because <laughs> you're kind of just like you're literally coming in and just like in and out. And but it's fine, you know. They they don't want to interact so much, and I think some people in the family don't necessarily want to interact with them either. So it's that kind of win-win situation. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I don't love it, but. I think it's for the best because I don't think people want to have those uncomfortable conversations, bring up those topics that people don't necessarily want to talk about to where there's a, a downer on the festivities. And, you know, usually when they show up, everyone else has already eaten. We're usually at dessert by that point. So like, Everyone is full, bellies are happy, um, conversation is light. Um, we may be, um, depending on how things are going, we may have a, a spades tournament going on. Like something will be happening. And then they just kind of graze in and graze out. Mm-hmm. All good. Yeah, Boundaries. we can budget for that. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Like, you, can take, you, can, you can take what's left. It leaves less to clean and pick up for the rest of us who have to stay here or who have been here the whole time, you know, and have to deal with all the leftovers and putting stuff away and, and cleaning everything. Cool. Like, get your shit and go. Yeah, that's, that's a, that is a, a positive reframe there, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I... Um, uh so the i think the difficult conversation one is one that is kind of difficult for people um you know um i often hear well what you know i'll go but if they start talking about you know whatever Mm -hmm. i'm leaving i'm like Mm -hmm. why you know you're going to a place where you know that they're probably going to talk about this right are you willing to go there knowing that like you know that topic of conversation is going on you have the ability to go into another room or, Mm -hmm. you know, do you have the ability to just sit there? Right. Like knowing that, like, you don't have to do anything. Um, uh, like, and contract with yourself. So like, you know, I'm, I'm here until dessert and then I'm out of here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if it's, you know, your space, (laughs) um, you have more, um, control more power um to do that um uh i have i've 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 practiced the 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 selective hearing portion of the conversation Mm -hmm. if it's something that i'm comfortable i go "Hmm? what oh okay i'm good and then i'll get quiet that is my Mm -hmm. signal to anyone, like, I'm not comfortable talking about this. So please don't prod. Because if you want me to get heated, I will gladly get heated. <laughs> if you want this to be a thing, if this is a topic that I, 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 if, you know, as I've been here on a podcast, everyone knows I can talk about pretty much anything. Um, oh, we know. Certain topics. Yeah, I know, right? Um, certain topics, certain conversations will can get, you know, can rile up. And um, it would be interesting to have those conversations 
or not have those conversations. I know myself and I know there are things that I probably don't want to talk about in um, just in the frame of family, in the frame of a family, of my family, or a family. So I will not talk. And if it gets too much, I will leave the room. Like you said, Ed, I will, if I don't, if you're trying to poke and prod, I will eventually leave. And if you're still following me and you're still wanting something from me, okay, you'll get it. You may not like it. <laughs> but, you know, and I, I will, I won't apologize, but you asked for it when you continued to press. Yep. And that's where the boundary things come in, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and where, you know, you can kind of communicate, Hey, um, I have, (laughs) I have a boundary where I'm not going to talk about these kind of topics. Um, but it sounds like you would like to, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, have this conversation with me. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Just so we're understanding. Yes? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> yep. Have fun. Just, just want to make sure that you're clear um, that this is a boundary that I'm holding. Um, and, um, but you... are over that boundary. Right. Mm-hmm. Have fun with that. Um, I know one of the boundaries I set, and I can't remember when I did it, um, but I... Uh, I started staying at a hotel. I did it on my own. And there was a reason for it. Um, stay, I was, when I used to go down, I used to stay with my mom. And um, there, when, when you're, st- when I'm staying with her as an adult, I still felt like a child. Yeah. Yeah. So I was realizing that every time I was there and I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily, like, I won't say I wasn't necessarily being treated like a child. I just felt like a child. Mm -hmm. And I knew I needed to do something. I needed to have my own space. Um, Plus, I needed something a lot more comfortable than the bed that she had in the guest room. Um, Because it was, at one point, it was a twin, like, mat, like, um, pull out, not even pull out, like, fold up mattress. No, it wasn't even a futon. It was like this fold up mattress thing that she had that my. hmm? Like a day bed? No, no, mm. it was so it it folded. It was I don't know. Again, she probably got it on Home Shopping Club for all I know. Um, but it was a fold. It was like a a frame and a bed that folded out. Like it was a separate like little bed, like not quite a cot, but not quite a like um day bed. It was definitely like a better than a cot. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, you know, it was, it was low to the ground, um, and it was tiny, but that was all she had because, um, when she moved into the apartment, her apartment, um, my brother moved in with her and he had his, you know, stuff. And when he left, well, she had stuff and, but when he left, she he she gave it to him like the bed and stuff because he was all that stuff so anywho um so all that that was all that she had and it was either that or a couch and couch gave no privacy no no privacy whatsoever this bed gave a little bit of privacy but it was it was just uncomfortable and eventually i told her like i need space also i i needed a I needed the freedom to be an adult, particularly a, you know, gay male adult in open relationship to like do things that I wanted to do on my own, like go out or whatever, um, have company, company. Um, 
Um, so that's where I decided like I needed a hotel. And when I did that, I was so glad I did it because it it came, it left it allowed a boundary to be set that I've appreciated to this day, which is I come into town, I get picked up, we do some shopping, and then I go to the hotel, and then um, we'll sometimes do dinner that night together. Then the following day, this Thanksgiving, we'll go to Thanksgiving dinner, so we'll do that together. And then she, she'll ask me if I want to do anything else, and I'll, or I'll ask her if she wants to do anything else the weekend, and we'll set plans and kind of leave it at that. Otherwise, the rest of the weekend is mine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that that's that's really important, and that's a that is a boundary that I have been very clear on for myself. Um, wherever we're going, um, I want to have the conversation that I have agency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and if that can be agreed upon, then I can stay with you. Um, but if that sounds yeah. like an awkward conversation or that's not, or that, that I'm not kind of getting what I need from that conversation mm-hmm. or that kind of clarification, um, I'll stay at a hotel. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, um, I think Gary, uh, you're, you live, you're like where you live is where most of your family is, right? Yes. I mean, like both, both families, like, uh, you know, my parents are here in town. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a sibling of my father that lives in Florida last I knew. And I think that's really the only one that's kind of out of town. I mean, you know, the further you go out in the family, then you start to end up having mm-hmm, mm-hmm, stuff yeah. like I have cousins and in different places or whatever. But yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Nice. I know Jeff lives like miles and miles away from his. I just, I just live on the opposite side of the country. <laughs> Vertically, <laughs> so it's not as far as like L.A. to New York or something like that, but. Yeah, my brother is currently in Washington, but he's potentially moving back to Minnesota. No, uh, but uh, I have an aunt who lives in Colorado. Mm. Um, and so we do have family that's all over the place, but kind of like the cluster is all in the Twin Cities area. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like my mom, most of my mom side of the family is in. Um, Kentucky, um, Louisville specifically. Some are like have moved further away, um, far as Florida. Um, I have one of my cousins that lives in Florida. Um, I had one of my cousins who actually lives in Bowling Green, which you know the tornadoes. Um, she's fine. Um, um, yeah, she, you know, but um, uh, uh, some that live in Tennessee, etc. But they all stayed have stayed fairly close um, to home. Um, Jim's family, um, his immediate, like his brother, his brothers live. Okay, one brother lives here. One brother lives in Madison. Madison is about an hour, hour and a half away. Um, and then his mother li- also lives in Indiana. Um, um, maybe forty-five minutes away from here, from our house. So, and then um, his nephews are the ones. Like one of his nephews is the one that has uh, like gone away. His oldest nephew um, is now in. I want to say Colorado, but I feel like that's wrong. But anyway. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All of my in-laws are in uh, Rochester, which is where I was for Thanksgiving. Um, there's nothing going on in Rochester, New York. 
Um, <laughs> I'm glad you said Rochester, then, New York, because I'm from Rochester, Minnesota. Oh. Uh, uh, and then um, my father-in-law lives in Tampa, Florida. So mm. opposite sides of the seaboard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So um, when I was kind of looking for um, articles on relationships with in-laws for like same-sex uh, couples, I, I found a, a recent um, study that was done um, with 400 same-sex uh, child in laws um, and their relationship with their same-sex parent in law, um, mm. and uh, the the patterns of that were um, to answer kind of our question from the beginning was that many of the um, the people interviewed struggled with acceptance from one or both of their parents in law. So similar to heterosexual relationships, there is still conflict um, mm -hmm. with law relationships. Um, and, you know, I'm more of like an acceptance, um, you know, dynamic. Um, and, you know, I know that that is very true with some of my clients that, you know, sometimes there's the, very real um, thing that, you know, sometimes uh, there is no communication, there's no relationship. Um, mm. And, you know, so there's, there is no in law, um, which is really sad and very unfortunate. Um, and, you know, the, and even if there is a conflictual relationship, it can make the person who is the in law uh, hesitant to even have a relationship with the same sex um, in law partner or with the in um, the same sex in law uh, parent um, because of the relationship that they have with their child, mm. um, which is interesting. Um, and I think, you know, different from, you know, heterosexual relationships. Um, also, um, a lot of the couples stated that um, the relationships usually improve with time, um, which, you know, I know that can be the case, right? That mm -hmm. relationships ebb and flow, um, which is also similar to regular same sex, uh, regular, or uh, regular, wow, um, heterosexual relationships. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and... Uh, you know, because at the beginning, and especially around um, when couples get married, there is a lot of, there can be a lot of difficulty blending families mm. together. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that gets improved with time. And I would be, I would put all of my money on the ability to, um, communicate boundaries with your in-laws as being a huge um, factor um, in those relationships improving. Mm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, um, while parents in law become, became increasingly accepting, usually there's somebody else in the family who is not accepting. Um, and which is, you know, unfortunate, but not a, uh, not something that we're not used to. Um, and then, so this was interesting. So uh, this was more for the relationship between the mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law. Um, but with the, with the mothers-in-law, as they became more um, accepting, it was, it was related to, um, their friend, the mother-in-law's friends and their social circle, either having children who were lesbian um, or gay or their friends and social circle became more socially aware. So it was more um, from their, uh, their outside influences helping, mm -hmm. um, which I know that for me, um, my mother was 
her acceptance towards me being gay was um, directly related to some of her friends having family members who were gay um, and them talking to her. Um, and I know that, that is something that I talk about. And then finally, um, the feelings of ambivalence towards family members is typical. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is, um, you know, also the same in heterosexual relationships. You know, you're yeah, you're not you're not going to like everybody. Yeah, and that's kind of what I've been. Um, I get sometimes like I've I've seen that happen. Um, there's a lot of ambivalence in our um, relationships sometimes. And it's hard, like I was talking about with my mother earlier, like I, I, like I feel like that's what it is. It's not a mm-hmm. good thing or a bad thing. It's just a, eh, it's a thing. She's not overly um, like, oh my God, I'm so, you know, happy that you're with, you know, my, my boy, my, you know, my son, yada, yada, yada. But she's not also not like, God, I hate you kind of thing. It's very much that in the middle, like, whatever Mixed. kind of thing. But she does, you know, I, w- I will admit she does ask about him when I've talked to her on the phone. Um, there may be other factors in play. Um, you know, we have, you know, we have, my mother in particular has issues with expressing emotions, um, which has fallen into me. I repress a lot of my emotions um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I do. Um, and I feel that that's, I don't want to say that that's the reason why she's not, she's the way she is about Jim, but I wonder if maybe she would act more friendly or unfriendly if she allowed herself to express those emotions. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. It does. Um... I think that uh, sometimes people think that because they don't have a exclusively positive relationship with a uh, family member or like an in-law in this case that they're doing something wrong or that there's something wrong. But this seems to tell us that having an ambivalent relationship, having a, you know, when you think about a family member, um, that there are positive and also negative interactions, um, feelings towards them, that that is normal. Um, and that that's going to happen. But over time, the hope is that that will resolve, that will, yeah, resolve itself into hopefully more positive feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that, you know, with, you know, um, me, I, I'm still riding the, I'm just happy to have mom and dad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Train, right they're not perfect um uh like his mom uh, jim's mom is awesome um you know she's so loving and so great when she got on facebook um she well she genu- genuinely likes every single thing that jim and i post <laughs> she, like even things that like she shouldn't like because <laughs> she has no idea what they are. She will like it and love it. And she is like the proudest um, of us. She's so excited. Um, so, and you know, with, with uh, Jim's dad, he is, um, you know, there's a little bit of a <laughs> attention there, um, but I don't care. I, it's good to um, have a dad <laughs> Yeah, and I will, I will put up with the political posts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to walk away. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, we just um, put him on follow. <laughs> um, yes, Dad. Again, whatever, Dad. Okay, Dad. Yep. Um, he will be like the proudest yes. father at my graduation and. I'm yeah. 100% okay with that. Um, nice. Just please don't wear a Trump flag. <laughs> oh my God. Right? <laughs> just, just, just please. 
Um, <laughs> that's all I ask. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree in some ways that I mean I, I know it seems weird, but I feel like we're it's the same. I think the only major difference is the acceptance part of it. Um, like you don't, you know, traditionally, you don't necessarily have to accept the relationship in what it is with a heterosexual relationship. Like everyone exactly. kind of, yeah, traditionally, like that's the way it is. Like, oh, you get married to a woman or a man, you know, the opposite gender, and you're good. Like that's well, the. I- I will say, though, that, oh. like, the relationship between mothers-in-laws and, and daughters-in-law, mm-hmm. I think there is a, um, there is an acceptance piece there where the mothers-in-law will not accept um, the power and um, influence that they have over their child. Um, so I think it's a different kind of acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um but like, if you look at like everybody loves Raymond, um, you know the relationship <laughs> between, um, you know Ray's mom and Ray's wife was, you know, uh, I, I mean, sitcoms are um, they're based in reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, Agreed. I was. Yeah, I think it, it just it's always going to be interesting. And then when you add like the like that's the big thing for me. That's the the overall like general acceptance and one of the things I, I know the article mentioned was like they were more accepting of the relationship and the in-law because of being accepting of the relationship as a whole mm-hmm. and that's always a you know a hopefully a hopeful good hopefully good thing uh, when it comes to these kind of interactions mm-hmm. um and um, I think the other thing that is really important is to know that um, to kind of know your place um, and like that when it comes to like setting boundaries um, that uh, we should always defer to our partner. Um, like we should be setting boundaries with our own family, desirably. Mm-hmm we should be setting boundaries with our own family. Mm -hmm. Um, um, However, that doesn't always happen. Um, So I would 100% say that it's really important that we have conversations about boundaries within our relationships. um, So then that way we can have conversations about boundaries with our families in relation to our relation, uh, in relation to our relationships, because sometimes the the boundaries that we're setting with our families um, is the first time that we are setting boundaries with them. Hmm. Fair. Damn, I I would agree with that. I mean, I I think boundaries are important. Period. But they're mm-hmm. also like dynamically important, not only in the relationships you're sharing with like the immediate people that like you have in your life as your loved ones. But, you know, I, I kind of think of it like bubbles. So like I have my own mm-hmm. bubble of my own boundaries and then I have a different bubble, which is like these people that I'm, that I'm the closest to or have an immediate like um, kind of connection with. And yeah. then it just kind of, you know, changes from there. And so I can see where it's kind of like, when you go to a family function this time of year, it's kind of, you know, you may talk about that with your partner or partners and be like, okay, we're going, (laughs) I have my bubble, we have our bubble, you know, and so we're just going to kind of, you know, maintain that kind of stuff as we, as we go about it. Yeah. Um, but like if your partner doesn't have the skills that they need in order to set boundaries with their family, you may need to, um, or else you will start resenting your partner. Um, Mm -hmm. if those boundaries aren't, aren't done. Um, so, Mm. and that could be really uncomfortable speaking to your in-laws about, you know, the boundaries that you're setting. Um, I I need y'all to, I need y'all to, (laughs) Mm -hmm. because this is what's going to happen now. 
We're going to leave him alone. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, you basically you're reinforcing or you're double bubbling. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, double bubble. You know, you're you're adding more in terms of the, the shield or, or whatever in that in that time frame, you know, because and I think that, you know, take some conscious measurement mm. to be like, don't because I don't think I think it's natural to want to defend. Mm hmm. But I don't think it's what you're talking about. Ed. Like, it's a different, you know, to just. It's more about respect. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, not go to war, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just about, you know, setting a boundary like um, uh, us, <laughs> we, um, us and we, right? We're talking yeah. about us and we. It's where I'm not trying to defend him or whatever. Um, but like, so here are some signs that you might need to set boundaries with your in-laws. So like um, when they make a special family event about them, like a wedding. Um, they gossip about you to their family members. Uh, they don't like you and have told you as much. Uh, they, sh they openly share their negative views of you with your children. Um, they, um, they make decisions for your family of oh, hell. No. Mm -mm. Mm, they encourage your spouse to keep secrets from you. Are you reading through a list of red flags? <laughs> uh huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these are signs that you need boundaries with your in laws. Um, they give you gifts with strings attached. I mean, he got a book about boundaries. No, 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 no. But I, this really sounds like not only a list of red flags, but it's like, like I, uh -uh. I, I was trying, <laughs> I was trying to think how to phrase this. It really, when it comes down to us, I'm like, these are not nice people. No. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, these are imaginary people. These aren't even real people. It's just reading a list, but I'm just like, fuck all of them. The hell? <laughs> like, like, no, not nice. Not nice. Yeah. Not virtuous. Not Christian. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> not Christian. Well, there's mm. some, there's some, there's some spiritual, like, you know, practice missing. I don't mean, you know, to make it all about, you know, Christianity, but I was just kind of like, dang. Was the first thing that came to mind, I was like, not not yes. good, not righteous, not you know. Like no, if you if if oh mama, um, if you are talking about me bad about me to my children, if I had children, oh, it's off. Like we're done. No, you don't get no take off the earrings. <laughs> the imaginary children that I have. <laughs> <not kidding. laughs> the ones that you haven't swallowed. So yeah, dude, the yeah, exactly. No, I mean right. It's like don't for, never bring children into it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm about I'm about to I'm about to channel something. So everybody uh step away from your from your speakers. Because I'm I'm about to act like I'm going off. Do not bring the children in. You are a fucking adult. Act like it. Mm hmm. Yes. No, 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 no. Yeah. Anywho, yes, but I agree with you. Like, the, like, I feel, but I, you know, I, I, I can see those things, like what you're, what you were talking about, Ed. I can see those things yeah. being problematic and a need to be like, no, we're, we're not, we're not having this. No, I mean, I had to do this um, with my uh, brother-in-law. Uh, my cousin was talking shit about him. Um, and I said, listen, I'm not comfortable having this conversation with you um, because, A, I'm not married to him. If you are uncomfortable with him, if you don't like him, you don't have to be married to him. Um, that's my sister's job. And also it makes me uncomfortable because it feels like, or I feel uncomfortable because um, I have no control over that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I would just kindly ever. ask that you, that you don't, mm -hmm. um, that, 
yeah, how about we not talk I, about that? I get what you're trying to yeah. do. Is there a reason you're why you're trying to, trying to complain to me? No, you're trying to get someone on your side is what she's trying to do. That's what they're trying to do. Right, but they're trying to get yeah. a family member on that side so they can Correct. then confront. But no, no, no. If but you that's why but that's why Jeff asking the question to them helps them get perspective, hopefully. It make it's a mirror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why why it, why are you coming to me? You need to listen like, to yourself. Like, cause, yeah. cause I, I, Why are you talking to me? I'm cause I'm with David. David. I could already see what you're doing. I, I mm-hmm. already stand. I, baby, this is, this is like Vulcan chess. It's multiple tiers. I can see the moves that you're making. Don't be trying. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're mm-hmm. not doing this. Um, yeah. Do you just, no, no, no. Um, no. Oh. See, and, and that. that conversation Ed, that you described reminds me a lot of one that I had with my father many years ago. I knew that he wasn't happy in his marriage, and um, he several times, you know, had, had confided in me via complaining about their relationship. And at a certain point, I just kind of I, I I put in a boundary, but the way I did it was very matter of fact and i just said to him so are you always going to complain about this to me or are you going to do something about it yeah and that candor <laughs> i think was appreciated for those of the two that didn't see it, that was david snapping his fingers um you know i mean and Lo and behold, within a handful of years of that first like happening, and and I repeated it a couple of times, like I I kind of had to say it again and again for I think him to realize I'm not your sounding board mm-hmm. because you are an adult and I am an adult and I get to choose what what I interact with and this is not something I want to be dealing with. So, lo and behold, I got divorced. Mm. And I was not surprised, but that's because I knew that there had been, you know, difficulties and, and that they're from, from all perspectives, my understanding is is that they were unhappy. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a relationship. Not everything is positive, but not everything has to be bad either. And you, you have to weigh that out and make determinations for yourself. So I found that very interesting when you were like, I'm not comfortable with this. And I'm like, you know, and I was kind of like, I felt the same way. It was kind of like, I can appreciate that you see me as an adult and a confidant and I am your child and you want to talk to me about this, but there's a part of me that's like, baby, I'm not your therapist. <laughs> and if I was a licensed therapist like you had, I would be like, I'm not on the clock. You're not paying me oh, for this, for this time. Yeah. So we're not doing this. Mm-mm. Yep. <laughs> um, I said that to, <laughs> I said that last weekend. I was like, listen, I'm not working. Um, these meltdowns that you're having, um, I don't need to be involved in. Um, <laughs> you're like, no, um, what not. I would recommend is wow. a therapist. And sadly, not me. Right. Or mm. I'm not on the clock. <laughs> and nor do I have the spoons right now to deal with your, your ass. So, mm. kindly hush. That, that brings up a good point. Um, Ed, are you familiar with spoons? Oh yeah. Can we make that a topic for LOR? Um sure. Yeah. I love, I love Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I um I actually really like the I don't think we've ever talked about grief though, have we? No, but we might be coming um, at this from two different perspectives anyways. My apologies <laughs> to the audience. It's like, what the hell's going on now? Anyways. Um, no, I was, um, uh, I'm just trying to, so spoons. The, the reason Let's I ask you. talk more about that. Yeah, sorry. We'll talk in post-show about why. Anyways, sorry. I'm also, uh, okay, it's getting it late. Yeah. Yes, it it, yeah. So um. But, but to give you an example of what um, uh, an example, uh, wow, yeah, it is late. Give you an example of what a boundary with your in-laws might sound like would be, I know that you care about our family and I understand that you want to be involved 
but it's important for us to figure out how to navigate this on our own. Fact. <laughs> so it shows appreciation, right? Which is something that is really important because, you know, you want to show like, hey, I'm being generous because I want to hit you right now. So I'm going to give you the generosity, the benefit of the doubt, but I'm mm -hmm. also just going to set that boundary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have been. Um, I, 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 I've, I appreciate. Advice. I appreciate criticism to a point. Um, but whatever you do, you're not going to tell me what or how to do things. Like, that's up for us to decide. You know, we're living in this house and we're doing these things and that's what we're going to do. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all ain't, this ain't y'all. Like, I'll put it like that. This isn't y'all. So, if it, you can you can offer your advice, but I don't have to take that advice. Mm -hmm. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with <Remember> that, <laughs> uh, I think that's the end. Anyway, it's got tact us, pop over to our website, comes out loud at com, shoot us an email at comes out loud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361 CL we'll Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at the appropriate with comes out loud at the appropriate place of the URL or join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col to find out when we're planning on recording these shows. You can also find various accoutrements, such as various Cubs Out Loud sweatshirts, like uh, Gary and I are wearing, and the Consent is My Four Play shirt, which is made by Smashy, where you can get other designs at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy. Our designs you can get at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. I forgot I didn't say that. And you can also subscribe to us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us some cash at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Find us on various, any of the podcast directories, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Audible. You'll find me anywhere in the internet as Box Tech, Box Puppy, Box God, Box something or other, or Windjump, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, which features bears and dragons where we're dealing, going into, out of the abyss. Currently in the Underdark. Ooh. Demon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cup 79 on most very related sites. That is T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-79. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Uh, speaking of not safe for work, that Twitter is GareBear73XXX. And Mr. Ed, as our illustrious guest uh, and resident sex therapist, amongst many other uh, beneficial titles I'm sure Ooh. that you carry. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? Well, you can find me on uh, Facebook at Edward AC. Um, I have a website, eactherapy.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at unicub underscore sex brain wizard. Uh, and also I'm on TikTok as unicub79. Um, and that Twitter handle, um, not safe for work, is jeepdaddy3. Um, just send me a message. Let me know who you are. Mm -hmm. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao for now. <laughs>